Hi there, everybody. We're talking today about the Snatch ransomware threat and what you need to do to make sure your organization uh, is protected against this threat. Uh, Lance Whitney is here with us to talk a little bit more about it and explain it to us. So, Lance, I think a good place to start at the beginning here, what this threat is, you know, what it looks like and, and how it's uh, involving companies and what it's doing. Sure. So, um... Snatch is a type of ransomware that was discovered last year by Sophos, which is a security company. And um, <clears throat> at that point, it was just your typical kind of malware. But what, the, what Sophos discovered uh, a few months ago is that there was a new component to this type of ransomware in that it basically takes advantage of Windows safe mode to uh, attack and infect a system. Um, so the way that this works is um, the ransomware, uh, Windows safe mode, of course, is a mode that's built into every version of Windows, every current version of Windows that is used mostly for troubleshooting purposes. And the way safe mode works is that it reboots your PC into sort of a plain a bare bones vanilla mode without loading too many software programs or drivers or services. And one of the things safe mode does is it will not load your antivirus or security software. The attackers behind this snatch ransomware are basically taking advantage of that attack. What they do is uh, their malware forces Windows to reboot in safe mode so that there's no security protection. Um, after that, then the malware goes into action, uh, triggering the ransomware, which then encrypts your hard drive or encrypts certain files and documents on your hard drive. And react ransomware threat where the, the unintended, unfortunate victim that your files are encrypted and unless you pay up, you're not going to get access back to them. So Lance, you know, we, we talk a lot about, uh, you know, ransomware and what people need to do and we can never remind enough of some of those important things, but just take us through, I know in your article, uh, you really laid out in a nice way some things that people need to keep in mind and some steps that they need to take. So just start there with uh, what people can do to protect themselves. Sure. Well, this type of ransomware, it can have hit anybody but it's really directed toward uh, uh, businesses and uh, organizations uh, because once, uh, that's the whole idea is that an attacker gets access to uh, network resources and to accounts uh, within an organization that it can just spread from there. So one piece of advice that Sophos um, offers is that um, if you're using a remote desktop, which is, again, something built into Windows that lets you access and control a remote computer, um, unfortunately, re uh, remote desktop is something that cyber attackers can exploit to do the same thing, to take control of a computer within an organization. So the piece of advice is that if you do have uh, computers that are accessible through a Windows remote desktop, you want to protect them. You want to put them behind a VPN, for example, so that only people who have the VPN credentials can access them. Uh, that same piece of advice also holds true for other types of remote access software beyond uh, Windows uh, remote desktop. There are, pro are third-party products. Uh, VNC is one of them. Uh, TeamViewer is another product. That's something that I use. But the same advice holds true. If, you're, if you have computers that are remotely accessible through some type of software, you want to protect them, secure them, uh, put them behind a VPN is a good piece of advice so that, uh, again, you need the proper credentials in order to access them. Um, another uh, way that cyber attackers uh, exploit and gain access into an organization um, is through an administrator's account. Uh, they use brute force uh, methods to try to ascertain the password for an administrator's account. Once they have that, then it's a, a free-for-all. They can gain access to servers, to the network. Um, so what Sophos recommends is that uh, you 
add multi-factor authentication to your administrator accounts so that even if the password is somehow compromised, the intruder can't get access to the account without that um, secondary form of authentication. Yeah, definitely. And I, you, you also mentioned, uh, Lance, to, to take note uh, inventory of your devices. Talk a little bit about that. Sure. So uh, a fourth piece of advice from Sophos is that you want to take inventory of all the devices um, within your organization, on your network, to look for any kind of weaknesses, vulnerabilities, uh, uh, accounts, uh, devices, uh, network resources, anything like that that is potentially open to access or to compromise by an outside intruder. So take advantage, take uh, inventory of those devices, see where the weak points are, are and then try to shore them up. Um, and then one final bit of advice that um, Sophos has is that you also want to search for net, your network for any kind of threats. So what the way that another way that cyber attackers work is they don't just jump into an organization and right away start their attack. It takes time. There's a surveillance phase that cyber attackers use that can take several days or even several weeks where they kind of scope out the network, look for vulnerable points, look for weak accounts that they can take advantage of. Uh, so what an organization can do or should do is they can run um, threat hunting or cyber threat hunting software on their network on a regular basis. And this type of software uh, specifically looks for kind of um, abnormal or atypical activity on the network. And that can be an alert that, okay, here's an outside intruder that's snooping around that we have to um, put a stop to. All right, some great advice there, Lance. Uh, we really appreciate it. And for more on the threat and how you can protect yourself, make sure you check out Tech Republic. Thanks for watching.